Hey there, welcome back to Morrison Heights Family Connect. It's the podcast of Morrison Heights Baptist Church. I'm Tim Peabody, and this is Bennett Ash. Thanks for joining us on the podcast, Miss Bennett. Thank you for having me. Now, I invited you because our church has been doing a lot this year with Embrace Grace, and you've been heavily involved in that. I want people to know what that is. So let's start out by saying what Embrace Grace is. Okay. Embrace Grace is a nonprofit organization that started in Texas by a woman named Amy Ford. Amy um, experienced an unplanned pregnancy when she was 19. She had family support and she even was part of a church. But at her church, she says she experienced what she described as unspoken judgment. Um, Fast forward about 22 years and she now describes that as people who probably loved her but didn't know what to do, didn't know what to say or how to help her. And so she sort of had a vision a few years ago of how she thought she could move that needle a little and help churches and young women who find themselves with unplanned pregnancies. Embrace Grace now has over 700 chapters across the United States in 47 states and 10 countries. Wow. And it's all done through churches. So. Wow. so we started this year, right? That's right. This we started in May. A lot of preparation for a few months before that, but we started in May. And because it's nationwide, they have a tremendous amount of material for you, curriculum for you, support for you. But I wanted to read, if I could, the vision, the official sure. vision yeah. for Embrace Grace. The vision is for every girl with an unplanned pregnancy to have a church to go to for spiritual, emotional, and physical support. And then their mission is to inspire and equip the church to love on single and pregnant girls and their families. And then their mission for us as leaders is to love audaciously, disciple strategically and introduce each participant to the grace of Jesus. Okay, so how have we done at that so far? Well, I think we've done pretty well. Well, good. Tell us about it. Um, We started, we have a 12-week program that we do with the girls, and we have two young women who have come and stayed and followed through faithfully in attending classes. Were they connected to our church before this? They were not. Okay, so Um, they just came because of Embrace Grace. One came to us through the CPC, and one came to us through a flyer that her daycare gave her about Embrace Grace starting at our church, which was exciting to me. Was it our daycare? It was not our daycare. It was another one. But um, just someone happened to pass those along to some daycares in the hopes that... um, they might be useful, and they were. Mm -hmm. So we started meeting around May 4th. Susan Wilson is my co-leader, and the two of us have met with these girls for 12 weeks. Tonight will be the last week. And um, we walk them through different elements of faith. We want them to know who they are in Christ. Because, Tim, we all end up in situations in our lives due to sinful decisions we've made or choices we make. All of us end up there. Mm -hmm. Some things are just more evident or visible than others. Mm -hmm. So what I want for these girls is what I want for myself. I want to see the arms of Jesus and a church that loves me unconditionally and forgives me and helps me. And so that's what we're trying to do for these girls. And I, I know Marson Heights is on board with loving people well, we just come up with some ways where they can express that and show that. Yeah, and it's reach hard out. to know how to convert, you know, a feeling or a desire to actually helping somebody. That's so I'm right. Glad you guys have given us a way to help with that. That's right. That's right. So have you had good church support? People have We've had good support. We really have, um, of course, financially is always a big way that the church can support us. And quite a few life groups have given to us financially to help because we have a shower for these girls at the end of their 12 weeks and have a day where we kind of pamper them. And um, that's a really special time and something that they they usually have not experienced before. Um, We know also because we so believe that every life is ordained by God, that no life is a mistake. And so we want them to see their children as just that, planned by God. 
So um, it's been the great. coming up, right? It's, Saturday? It's this Saturday. We'll have a ministry time that we'll share with the girls um, a little later. They'll get to be pampered a little bit that morning and have some special things. And um, then we'll do that. And there are a lot of ways that the church has gotten involved. One thing is we meet at 530. And so the girls, it's right when they're about to have dinner. And even if they bring children with them that they already have, um, we have people that have provided dinner for us every Wednesday night for the last 12 weeks, which is Good. an easy thing for someone to do, but a big blessing for us, yeah, yeah. you know. And um, there have been people who are planning the shower, planning the other times on Saturday. We have a prayer team that has met faithfully and prayed for us. And um, so it's been really good. Good. So I know you and Susan Wilson are helping with mm -hmm. this. Who else is helping with this? Bethany England has yeah. played a big part in it. She's met with us quite a bit, and she's heading up the shower Saturday also. And then Chrissy Sanders mm -hmm. is um, leading what we call our princess time. And I like and don't like that term, but it but it kind of is what it is. It's a pampering <laughs> time for the girls. Well, you if know, there's so. anybody in our church qualified <laughs> to lead the princess time, I bet it's Chrissy. That's why I thought of her, and she's doing <laughs> a great job. So, And um, Emily... Andrews has sort of headed up our social media aspect of Embrace Grace and is doing some um, real practical jobs for Saturday too for us. So there are a lot of ways to be involved, um, a lot of things that need to be done. Not all of them may seem important, but all of them are needed and necessary. So Saturday's the end of this semester, but That's there will right. be future semesters of Embrace Grace? There will be. We plan to start another semester in January sometime. Okay. Um, there's a church here in Clinton that also does Embrace Grace, and so we try to stagger with them so that we don't overlap having um, a class in Clinton because it, we just help each other out rather than oh, that makes sense. have classes going yeah. on at the same time. So they'll do a class starting in about another week, and then we'll follow up in January. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Now, I know we at least offered Embrace Legacy. Did we have any men join us for Embrace We Legacy? did not. We have okay. a couple of men here in the church that um, would really love to lead that. And um, Embrace Legacy, for those that might not know, is a ministry much like Embrace Grace, but it's to men who would be fathers, um, expectant fathers. And we really feel that it's important to give those men, if they're willing, an opportunity to be discipled by men um, and prepare to have a child. And so sometimes that's possible and sometimes that's not, but we want to offer it every time. Well, good. Well, I, I hope that we do continue to offer it mm -hmm. and have somebody take us up on it. I know mm -hmm. there's a lot of people who are willing, eager to help. You mentioned that people can give to a designated fund for Embrace Grace. So if somebody just designates Embrace Grace on a on a gift. It'll go to On a gift your to the church. It'll go there, yes. And so I assume you'll have everything you need for this shower, the one that's happening Saturday. I think we do. <laughs> okay, well, if not, I bet, I bet somebody will see this podcast and uh, help with this shower. But anything that comes in will go to the next yes, year's Yes, and, and that's, that is helpful because we started this semester with no money, and there are materials to order for these girls. We order curriculum for them and things like that. So to have a little money to start off next semester would be a whew, moment, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Uh, I'll say this about Embrace Grace. Uh, there might have been some you know, curriculum costs and everything, but I've never seen an organization more professionally run as far as like church programs and stuff go. I've never seen anything like Embrace Grace. They really do it right. They really, they really do. Susan and I went through several hours of online training that they mm -hmm. provide there, and they have real people that call you to check on you and see how your training's going and that are available mm -hmm. to you anytime you have situations come up that you might need an answer to. It's a well-run ministry. It really is. What happens next after the shower for these ladies that have completed the course this semester? What's next for them? Well, I was told before we ever started, that's always the big question. They usually don't want to stop meeting. And uh -huh. so I have a feeling that's something we'll talk about tonight with them. There are lots of options. Um, there's actually a study that we could do with them afterward, but a big goal of Embrace Grace is to try to involve these women in a church 
where they can be discipled, join a life group. I mean, we, Susan and I, I feel like we'll have long-term relationships with these two ladies, but you want them to become part of a That's body right. where they can grow and be discipled. And um, Dr. Greg came last week and sat down with our ladies and visited with them, which was really special. And um, you know, he certainly invited them to be a part of our church here, and we would love that. But um, encourage them to find a church home. So. Well, we have great love and respect for those ladies making the choice to mm -hmm. uh, to follow through with an unplanned pregnancy is a hard, mm -hmm. big choice, and yeah. our our yeah. respect is to them. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, from dealing with women who've experienced this, I think the overriding emotion that surfaces is fear. Mm -hmm. What are people gonna think of me? What is this gonna cost? How am I, all of it, yeah. all of it. It's fear, it's so fearful. And so we would like for women to not be afraid, to be willing to reach out. And um, if they will reach out and just let us get started with them, I think that fear is pretty quickly um, eliminated. You know, the CPC and organizations like Embrace Grace sometimes get a bad rap, I think, because since Roe v. Wade was overturned, I've heard from a lot of a few people on the other side of the fence. And one of their big talking points is always um, how little help there is available for women who find themselves pregnant. And I almost laugh when I hear that because there is so much help available for women who find themselves in that situation. Um, our CPC here, not just since Roe v. Wade, but has always provided lots of help um, for women and practical help, counseling help, decision-making help, no matter what women decide to choose. First of all, we try to present them with more choices, but secondly, no matter what they choose, we help them practically through that too, you know. And I've always been so blessed by the fact that um, the CPC, even if women have chosen to have an abortion, we want the same thing for those women, love, forgiveness, acceptance, not judgment and condemnation. And the CPC has always provided, in spite of wanting to preserve life, help for women who have made that choice too. And so to me that speaks volumes. Um, I, I feel like a lot of people who speak so boldly on television about this issue have never been to a Center for Pregnancy Choices to see just what is available. So this is just another arm um, for us to use. I feel like certainly since um, Roe was overturned, more than ever, we need more ways to reach out to women, yeah. more ways to love on them um, and help them. Well, bless you and bless them, the, the CPC, mm -hmm. Aaron, Kate, and everybody there for what they, they do. They do a great job. Uh, I know they have a, a different and a hard road ahead of them uh, now with all the changes that are happening in our country. Uh, but we're going to have them on the podcast next week. That's and hear great. What the road looks like ahead for that's great. For Aaron Kate. So I'm looking forward. <laughs> They'll be busier than ever. That's right. I, I hope. I don't have it nailed down yet, but I think we'll have Aaron Kate next week. Yeah, good. Uh, you have a verse you want to share with us? I do. Um, there's a verse that embrace grace kind of uses as the backdrop for their vision and all um, for Embrace Grace. And it's found in Acts chapter 21. And it's where Paul is um, giving his farewell talk to the Ephesian elders. And he's just talking about he's leaving, he's going to Jerusalem, he doesn't know what will happen to him there. Um, he says, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me if, I, if only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. And the overriding theme, and something we'll be talking about a lot tonight in class, is God's grace. It's so important. And um, I was also reminded today as I thought about Embrace Grace and all the people who have been involved with us and helped us. You know, in Matthew, um, Jesus is talking about the final judgment. 
and he's talking about on the final day when the Son of Man comes and all his angels will be with him and he'll sit on the throne and he'll separate the sheep from the goats. And then he'll look at the sheep. And I just want to read this verse. He says, Come to me, you who are blessed by my Father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit. And then the righteous answered him and said, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or in prison or needing clothes? And the king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. I just believe that God puts opportunities in front of us almost daily to love people. Once we come to Christ, we no longer live, but he lives. And so I'm just a firm believer that all of our actions show the love of Christ to people when we help them and meet needs for them. So this church certainly does that. Serve is a great example um, in July of what we're doing. So it makes me proud to be here. Well, good. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, and thank you for telling us about what you've been doing. Uh, I want to read a couple of names off the hospital list. Forgive mm -hmm. me for getting my phone out to check the list. I didn't print it out. Uh, we do need to remember Pat Turner in the hospital uh, mm -hmm. from a fall, um, and also Anna Royston, who's uh, in the hospital in Washington, um, and Lynn Porter. So a few on our list, and also I should mention he's not on here, but uh, Avery Mathis mm -hmm. is in the hospital. So mm -hmm. uh, we're remembering those families. Um, well, why don't you lead us in prayer, and okay. we pray especially for these young ladies that have completed Embrace Grace this year. I sure will. Father, we just thank you for your abundant blessings um, that you have given us. And Lord, right now, I just want to lift up the two ladies who have come um, not really sure how this semester would go for them, but they've been brave enough to come and give us the opportunity to share with them and um, show them the love of Christ. And so, Father, I just pray that right now, today, you would be with both of them. They are so precious to me, and I know they are to you. And so, Father, I pray that um, as they're approaching uncertain times and a lot of decisions that have to be made, that you would just um, show yourself to them in a very real and powerful way. I thank you for Morrison Heights, Father, and what a privilege it is to serve at a church that so willingly loves on people no matter what. And so, Father, we do want to continue to be the hands and feet of Jesus everywhere we go. Lord, I pray for these that Tim has listed and mentioned that are in the hospital, Lord, that you would just provide healing for them and that um, your presence would be so close to them. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for the ministry of Embrace Grace and all of the women who make it run so well. Um, Lord, just continue to reach out through your Holy Spirit to women and give us opportunities to show them the truth, the truth that Jesus loves us. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Bennett. You're welcome. Here's something people don't know about you. I know you've been involved in this type of ministry for a long time, but how about the job you used to have as a short-term foster? Can we, can yeah, we talk about that? We can. Um, when we moved out to the country and our children were grown and I kind of looked at Tommy one day and said, what am I going to do <laughs> with myself? I had quit mm -hmm. working and just through a very ordained but odd seeming set of circumstances, I found out about fostering newborn babies before they were adopted. And so through what was Bethany Christian Services, it's now Lifeline, which our church has an affiliation with, um, Tommy and I fostered about 35 newborn babies. 35? I would go I pick them up at the hospital and bring them home. And um, it's normally a few weeks or a few days? It, or? it could be as short as a few days. It was as long as a few months. Okay. But every circumstance was different, and I'll just add, it was never the circumstance that there were not adoptive parents waiting to get a child. That was never the holdup. Um, but there are a lot of other details involved that could be a holdup at times. But it was, it was such a blessing to be able to 
take a child and hand it to a family who had waited months, maybe years, to have a baby. And so I, I was privileged to get to pray with probably 30 of the birth moms out of those 35. And that was so special for me because just like this with Embrace Grace, I, I wanted to affirm them. Yeah. and bless them for the decision they were making. Yeah, because absolutely. contrary to what a lot of people might think, I've had a lot of people say to me over the years, I just don't understand how someone could give their baby up is the term they typically use. Mm -hmm. I watched these women agonize over the decision. Mm -hmm. They love their babies. And um, for differing reasons, they could not care for them. And so to me, they made the bravest choice Right. and hardest choice to give those children to another family. And so I loved getting to do that. I eventually got too old. I can't stay up I don't believe all it. night anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we did it for about eight years, and I couldn't do it anymore. So. All right. Well, I'd, that's one of my favorite uh, parts of your story, and I don't think everybody knows it. So oh, thanks. Another of my favorites is the time that Charles Smith almost died at your house. <laughs> I'll let Dr. Greg share that. <laughs> That's Dr. Greg's son-in-law, everybody knows. But uh, he fell off a horse. At he house. sure did. Lived to tell the story, <laughs> but he had a pretty good injury. Uh, so, yeah. Well, you'll have to ask Dr. Uh, Dr. Greg or Charles or yeah. better Tommy about that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's the end of this episode. Thank you for joining us on the podcast this You're week. You're welcome. Thanks I for having heard me that you have watched every episode of this podcast. I have. <laughs> that makes me so happy. I have thoroughly Thank enjoyed you. the podcast. I've learned a lot about a lot of people. I, mm -hmm. I'm a people person. I'm very interested in things yeah. about people. It's been great. You've done a great job, Thank but I've told you. you that before. That's what I like about it, the fact that you can meet people that you don't know. That's I meet right. people I don't know through it. Uh, so it's a great blessing. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, couldn't do it without you. This is the <laughs> podcast of Morrison Heights. Morrison Heights Family Connect. We love our family. Do, do, do.